Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. I'm very excited as always because I love to craft. I love to paper craft and show all of you how to use our Stampin' Up! products in many ways to make fun fold cards, cards with fun techniques, and that sort of thing. So. Let's dive in. It is Wednesday, November 1st. Happy November, everybody. 2023 at 11 a.m. as I'm broadcasting to you live. I want to introduce you to uh, Trisha Josephs on YouTube and Lisa Marshall on Facebook. They are my moderators. They're there to answer questions while the live is going on because um, I don't catch them. <laughs> I certainly do not catch the uh, questions. Um, but uh, so they're here to help us out. So please thank them, welcome them. Um, tag them if you can. Uh, when you tag Trisha, what you do is you start typing her name, then start um, typing the at sign right after, and then, um, let's see here, no, how does it go? You start typing your comment, then you click at sign, and then start typing her name. Sorry, I got thrown off there. Um, in this video, we're going to be making a fun fold card. Uh, it's a pretty simple fun fold card. And it's using an entire sheet of six by six scenery paper. We have some new products coming up in the online store on November 7th. And one of them is called the Meandering Meadows six by six designer paper. It's gorgeous. It has beautiful scenes that were hand painted by the artist who created uh, the, the paper. Um, and so we're gonna use those designs to make um, a beautiful card where you see every single piece. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's see, uh, this video will be live on my, on my website, my blog, at uh, 3 o'clock today because I have two extra cards. I decided today that we're going to demonstrate um, a different one than what I've already photographed because you can make a whole bunch of these cards in different styles just depending on whichever, you know, whichever sheet that you pick out. And then I quickly, before this video began, um, grabbed, excuse me, grabbed another sheet. It's becoming winter, you guys, so I have this um, <laughs> nose that runs when it gets below 70 degrees. <laughs> ah, old age. Um, I did another one right before the video began so that I could show you three different samples using this gorgeous paper. Now, you could apply this, to, um, this card fold to lots of different pretty papers, and it doesn't even have to be six by six, but Stampin' Up! certainly has been knocking people's socks off with the beautiful six by six papers lately. So much so that certain ones are selling out. People are loving Stampin' Up! products. So um, let's see, we're gonna be using that paper. We're also gonna be using the three color glimmer paper um, and then the adhesive back dragonflies and birds, which by the way, even though they're supposed to debut tomorrow, um, the North American market, I believe it's North America. I, I don't know if it's Canada too, but North America, um, U.S. for sure, the butterflies and dragon, I'm sorry, birds and dragonflies are right now currently unavailable until like the end of November. <laughs> Demonstrators, I guess we bought them up. Um, so keep that in mind, but I do have a substitute idea for you that I have on one of my other cards. So thank you for your sweet words, you guys. I'm seeing, I'm catching some comments as they're rolling in. I appreciate you so much and I appreciate that you're here with me live. I hope that you can sit back and enjoy. I'm going to show you now the um, supply and measurement sheet so that you can um, follow along if you want to. If you have these supplies, maybe you can cut real quickly along with me and create this card. So let's bring that sheet over. I'm going to click on something up here in my... There we go. All right. <laughs> So here is the um, measurement sheet, supply sheet. You can see a visual of what my initial card looked like, the one that's already photographed on my blog. But after this live is done, I have to quickly photograph and edit the other ones and upload them into my blog post. So that's why it's gonna be a little bit later than normal because I really want you to be able to see close-up photos of all three cards. This is the original. You can see we're using basic black cardstock as our base. It's um, cut to a, an odd size and scored on each side. And then we have basic white for layering, um, three color glimmer paper and the meandering, meandering Meadows designer paper. Those are two of the three new products that I'm featuring today. Again, they're not available until November 7th, but I wanted to 
help you to fall in love with them before they debut. And then you can see all the supplies. Now there's not a ton of supplies. It's a very simple card. There's no die cutting. There's one punch being used. Um, I've brought in my favorite stamp set called Layering Leaves, which you know you could substitute any stamp set really. The, the, the queen of the card is basically the paper. So um, you could use any word stamps that work. And I'm gonna show you how to adjust your banner sizes so that you can use different stamp sets. But of course my go-to is layering leaves. So on that note, let's go down to the desktop and bring in that card. Let's take a peek at it. You can see here are the beautiful birds and there's the dragonfly. That's the product that is currently um, unavailable until the end of November. But this is how the card opens. So it sits like this. And let's zoom in so you can see it a little better. And then you open as you normally would, but you've got this extra little panel here that allows you to see even more of that beautiful designer paper. Now this is five and a half inches tall, but here's the other half inch right along here. So, and you could flip it over, you could do the scenery side instead if you want to, especially if there's some fun details still in there. This was cut off the base, I believe, right through here. I mean, there were some flowers on there, but I wanted to just kind of bring that design over and in. Because this card is designed on the inside almost just as much, in fact, even more, I would say, than the outside, we are gonna start with the inside first. So, how is the temperature in your area, you guys? We, all of a sudden, right before Halloween, got snow. Those poor little kiddos in their Halloween costumes were bundled up so tight coming around, oh, here's my trimmer, coming around for trick-or-treating, and uh, yeah, it's the way it is in Minnesota, pretty much. We just have to accept the fact that, um, you know, togas and, and outfits that show off bare skin are not gonna work on, on Halloween. <laughs> We're gonna cut this um, at the six and a quarter inch mark. So I'm gonna bring this into my trimmer here at six and a quarter. In fact, you know what, let's, no, let's do that. Yep, six and a quarter this way. This will be our best use of the paper. So the six and a quarter inch mark, if you are not familiar with the Stampin' Up! trimmers, is right on, zooming in here, um, it's right on this little edge. So you have your six inch mark where that arrow's pointing up, and then you have one, two, three little notches plus a fourth one right on the outside. It's that outside notch. You have to go up and over because this one will stop you at six inches. You have to go up and over that ledge, and there it is. So we're gonna cut right there. Now we have a six and a half inch wide piece, and we wanna trim this to five and a half inches tall. Now, from um, those pieces, you can create more, hopefully. Um, we're actually not going to do that today, but just wanted to point that out to you that you have some um, extra cardstock on there. And I actually did cut it the wrong way. Let me show you another way. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. You know what, live videos, we're gonna make mistakes. This is a better paper saving way. Cut it five and a half right here. And now, because now you have two card bases, now cut this one to six and a quarter. There we go, let's compare that. Here we have a full card base plus extra, and here we don't have a full card base plus extra. <laughs> so do it the second way. All right, so I have two card bases. Yay, I get to make another one after this video. So now we're gonna bring it in this way into our trimmer. So you're looking at it more in a horizontal or landscape fashion, and we're gonna bring it to the one inch mark on this side, and we're going to score with our light blade. Flip it over and score again. My kiddos are old. They don't go trick-or-treating anymore. They were in the house with friends, watching movies and eating a ton of food. Got pizza from Jets. It was a fun night, but they stayed up late. Halloween on a Tuesday night for teenagers, you're gonna just deal with the fact that they're gonna stay up late. In, in um, grade school, when I was a teacher, I would just deal with the fact that the students would come to school with sugar highs because I taught second grade. And boy, yeah, they were bouncing off the wall quite a bit. Okay, 
So now we have some white layers. So we're using black and white cardstock, but you can certainly change it out. I'm a fan of black and white cardstock. I feel like when you're gonna show off designer paper, um, these papers don't distract as much and really make the paper pop. But if you'd rather use lavender cardstock or navy cardstock or something like that, you, you can, you can change it out. Okay, the basic white that I've got here are the pieces that are gonna go on the inside. And you can see it's not just one full layer where the designer paper is going across it. It is, sorry, I have some issues going on with my tech, technology again. Hopefully we're streaming to both Facebook and, oh good, we are. Okay, <laughs> yay, last week we were having trouble. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp onto the upper one and the lower one I'm gonna leave for signings because we like to sign our cards, right? Here is the stamp set called Layering Leaves. And we're gonna be using the Best Wishes stamp on the top, so let's grab that, which I've already put onto a D-sized block. We're using Tuxedo Black Memento ink. Inking up our stamp. Gotta love photopolymer, we can see right through it. Rachel is using her stamp and Pierce mat. And now I'm looking at the bottom of the word wishes and the bottom of that paper and making sure that they're lined up with each other, going parallel. So there is my inside sentiment for my card. I'm going to add this to the inside now using a little bit of seal. And we're going to position that right at the top about a sixteenth of an inch away. Do you see how close that is? Now, because we're using very dark cardstock, I also kind of have to bend or have really good lighting so I can see that my cardstock layer is not meeting up right with the fold. And you can see if I press these back, you can see that I've got that, um, that 16th inch border all the way around. In fact, let's just keep that open like that for adding our bottom one. So our bottom one, yes, we'll add that with seal also. Yeah, this was a good idea, Rachel. Sometimes I think of things right as I'm demonstrating, you guys. Okay, so there's the 16th inch border on the bottom and on the two sides, all right? Okay, and now we're gonna do the little decorative strip. And that's why it's good to do the inside first because if you're doing the decorative strip afterwards, if you have anything that extends outside the edge, you can't easily trim it off because your card is already assembled. So let's bring in the three color glimmer paper now. This is my pack that I got to pre-order as a demonstrator. Gotta love that. And it comes with three colors. Da, 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 da. We have uh, Gorgeous Grape, Petal Pink, and um, Pretty Peacock. And I'm gonna be using, what color should I use today? You know what? I'm gonna let you guys pick. This is the one that I picked out. I hope that it's okay, but if you want to, let's take a look at all the other designer paper styles from this pack and maybe we can choose something different. Um, the back side of this, by the way, has some greens, um, some purples in it. Okay, so we have this design, gorgeous meadow with some purple mountains in the back and we have blue clouds on the back side and then we have that one which I just shared with you. This one I already did on another sample card, so I can't wait to share that with you. Um, this one has the, oh gosh, a really bright, cheerful yellow color and some blue flowers in a field and a blue background. And then we have these pretty, um, what would they be called? I don't know the names of flowers. Anyways, <laughs> where they have the dark center in the middle. I know that there's a name for those. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. You guys are going to shout it out about 30 seconds after because we're on this delay. We have this little path with a tree, dark peacock background. Then we have the pink floral field. Black Eyed Susans, is that what they are? <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Pretty yellow back, uh, back uh, side paper. And then look at that, lots of sky. I don't want that one, by the way, because I we want to show off way more um, design than that, okay? <laughs> Are some of you shouting it out now? <laughs> 
And then here's another path. I love the designs that this artist created. They're just gorgeous. Makes me want to go on a walk. A walk in the meadow. Here's the back sheet that goes with it. We have this one. And we have that one. Oh, this one, did we use this? No, okay, that's a different one. Do these both have the same? Oh, similar backgrounds, look at that. Hmm, cool. All right, we're gonna make it a choice between three, you guys, because I wanna use that uh, pretty peacock designer paper. So I'm gonna pick out a few different designs, just three. All right, would you rather have the pink flowers would you have rather have the um, blue or the bigger path? Pink flowers, blue or bigger path? So as you are voting, and um, I will just take a peek at the comments as they're rolling in, I want to point out the third product that is going to be available for ordering on November. Oh, the third product that's not going to be available, but it's a new online product. So the Meandering Meadows the three color glimmer paper, and then this is the one that is a little delayed because we just loved it up as demonstrators. These are the adhesive back um, birds and dragonflies. And what you could substitute is, here they are, you could substitute these brushed brass butterflies. Okay, I'm seeing flowers, pink, path, Oh, now you're going to name flowers for me. Some people are actually calling out the names of them. Don't do that because I won't. I don't know them. <laughs> blue, blue, um, bigger path. Love it. Oh, what's echinacea, you guys? I don't know that. Purple path, blue. Okay, pink. Pink, blue, path. Oh, wow. You guys, oh my gosh. Everybody's voting differently. That's because the papers are all so beautiful. These are the other items that you could um, substitute for, and that's what we're gonna do on one of our cards. Let me keep going here. Pink, blue, path, flower. <laughs> all right, I'm going with this one just because it was my original choice, and it seems to have more of a filled space. We'll just go with that. But you can see that there's a lot of choices. Um, yeah, I think we were all over, all across the board on that. Okay, so now we're going to cut this. And we're going to cut it so that we have um, most of our seam on the front four and a quarter inches. If we cut here, we're going to cover up this little, I think it's a fence. Um, it's going to get covered up a lot. So we're going to shift over, and this is where the full portion of our card is going to be. If we were using this one, I would probably cut it onto this side instead and have this be the front. You could even put your sentiment up here because there's lots of sky and less ground. Um, and then this would be that skinny strip. So now I'm back and forth on it. And then what was the other one we had? The path. On this one, I would probably cut it here and I put my sentiment strip along the bottom. Oh my gosh, you guys, there's so many pretty choices. I might change my mind. <laughs> Let's go with the path. Okay, we're doing the path, you guys. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna cut off the bottom or the top a half of an inch strip. So we're gonna do that. And I've chosen the bottom because I don't want to necessarily cut into this tree. Do I want to cut into the tree? So you have design choices, you guys. What if I did that? What would it look like? Yeah, I'm going to cut across the bottom. See, this is what happens when I'm designing in front of you guys. This is not my skill. <laughs> I don't have this as a good skill. I know there's a lot of videos out there where you guys pick and then they just go with it. And I think too much. Okay, now this piece is five and a half inches tall. Okay, it's going right to the five and a half inch mark. So we can either choose this side or this side, and I'm gonna choose this to be the fuller section. So we're gonna cut that to four and a quarter. So now this is four and a quarter by five and a half, and this will be the part that's underneath on the inside of the card, okay? This little strip here is gonna get cut 
so exactly that you guys are gonna have a headache, okay? Here it goes. You're gonna, you have a six inch strip. And remember our card when it's open, it's six and a quarter. We need to make it stretch. In order to do so, we need to have a, an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch in between in those two sections where the card is scored. So we need to cut this just under the one inch mark. When I zoom in, that mark is this one here. So we're bringing it right to the 15 sixteenths mark or the mark that's just under one, which is why I put that less than sign on there. Now we lift this up and we keep this in that spot because we want to keep them in order. And we're gonna, here I'm showing you where I'm putting them, just off to my grid paper up there. And then I want to flip this around because if there's a pattern that really is detailed, I want it to fit together. This one, it doesn't seem too bad. It's probably gonna be forgiving if we mess up. Then we cut off on this side and we flip those around and we put those puzzle pieces right there. So I've got two sections that are just under an inch and this one is four and an eighth inches. It's like perfect. It matches the width of the white paper on the inside. We're gonna cut the um, Pretty Peacock color now and I have cut some of this off on one of my sheets I believe. Oh, maybe I haven't yet. Okay, so we're gonna flip it over. When we cut glimmer or glitter paper, it's best to not have your um, the bottom of your cutting blade scraping against the roughness. So we're gonna turn it over and cut it at one quarter inch this way. And we have a 12 inch long piece. Now when we're gonna do this, keep in mind the next time, if you're gonna make multiple cards, Keep cutting like this. Don't go back and forth like this because eventually you're not gonna have enough glimmer paper. So here's our um, three color glimmer paper and I can put the rest of this away. We're using the Pretty Peacock color for the glimmer paper. Okay, and then we're gonna cut off a piece that is four and an eighth inches. We'll leave this one longer that one's gonna go on top or on bottom. Let's put it on the bottom, just cause. All right, so now this piece is gonna go, let's see here, how do we wanna do this? We're gonna go this way. I'm changing it up, you guys. So if we're gonna put this one along the bottom, I want my adhesive, if I'm using just seal adhesive, I want my adhesive to go here instead of on the back side because this adhesive is over a quarter of an inch wide and this piece is only a quarter of an inch. I've left adhesive away from the white paper. So you can see it's not super close. Now when I lay this down, it's grabbing onto the sticky stuff and it's in place. Even though I have some extra adhesive sticking out, it's not bothering me because I know that the next piece I'm gonna add is this one. And when I add this one, I can add it right on top of. Now, if there's any um, issue, like let's say, let's just peel this up and put it down a little bit further away. Let's just say that we kind of scrunched these in a little further and we lay this down and let's say that it's coming up too close to the white. You can't see that because it's so far away. But let's say that's happening where it's coming too close to the white. You can overlap onto your glimmer paper. So this is where you have your wiggle room. Um, let me just adjust a little bit. All right, next. How'd that one go in there? I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna guess this way. So that one can go there, but I can actually put adhesive across the back side because my seal is just under the width of my paper. And I'm gonna shift that, lay it down. There we go, okay? So there is the inside um, on the uh, middle. And now we want to do our other two spots. And this is my little advice for this. Just get the Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult to get your, um, well, you could use this. You could go ahead and do the little strips like that. But let's bring in the multi-purpose because here is the joy of that. You can just put it right on the back side. I've got it in a um, precision tip bottle. And then when you lay it down, and I'm lining it up with the grid paper here, when you lay it down, 
if it's not in the exact spot, you see how I'm not getting it straight here? I still have wiggle room because I'm using multi-purpose liquid glue. It takes a little time to dry and then all of a sudden it's bonded. So use that time to make sure that it's going straight onto your card. Everything's going in the same direction. Flip it over, trim it, and now we'll do the other side. Okay, and lay it down again so that your card is lined up with the grid paper. And I'm leaving that eighth inch on the sides here. You can see I've got this gap in here which allows for me to close and open my card. Now if you're not good at guessing an eighth inch, then you may want to do your designer paper pieces first. Okay, so let's say you put your designer paper piece on here. And you line it up real close to and right on that black edge there. And that kind of dictates for you where your glimmer paper should start. Does that make sense? If you put it on after your glimmer paper and if you need to, you can shift this out, but you can't necessarily shift it in. If you shift it out, you have some room for cutting. Okay, let's flip that and put adhesive on the back side. This paper is really hard to figure out as far as where the pattern goes, so I'm just not worried about that anymore. <laughs> and we did have our glimmer paper out a little ways on that one, which is good, because then we have excess that we can trim off instead of too little. There's the inside of our card. The bulk on the inside will cause your card to kind of prop open, but that's okay because when you give a card to somebody, you want it to kind of like open up anyways, right? And show them your message. No, I don't know. And then you can put it on display and eventually these things here, I'll show you on my finished card. See this one here? It's, it's wanting to come open just because again, we have the bulk in there, but you can still display it so that this is facing front if that's something that you like to do with your cards. Okay, now we add the designer paper. So let's grab our two layers. For this, I'm gonna suggest adding your glimmer paper and your front piece. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we have our measured piece, which is two and three quarters by one inch high. But for this card, I want it to be a little bit taller. So I did give you the measurements for the card that's pictured in the PDF. But if you want to fit the thinking of you message, like, you know, or another message from some other stamp set, we're gonna, we're gonna adjust the height. And on another card that I have finished, I have actually adjusted the length instead. So let's grab our banners pick a punch. These little channels here, are half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch. So this piece fits in here perfectly. This one is wider, as you can see. So when you put that piece in there, you kind of have to angle it, um, angle it to get it in, make sure that it's overlapping those two edges, and then using your hand to kind of wiggle it and get it to look even here, you're gonna you're gonna punch, you're gonna pull it out, and then we've got these little extra um, extensions. You're just gonna take your scissors and cut along there. And now you've got a larger banner punch than what you thought you had. Yay. Let's grab our black ink again and ink up the thinking of you and stamp that down. You can stamp it in the middle, you can stamp it however you want. I'm gonna stamp mine in the middle that is a juicy ink pad. I must have just re-inked it. Okay, and now we're gonna add our glimmer paper to the edge, the right edge, and we have plenty extra, which is great. You can use your seal adhesive and maybe use it on like a silicone craft sheet. Let's say that you only have the dry adhesive. You could do it this way, where your adhesive is going off to the side and it's not getting all over your grid paper, or again, you can take and just use 
the glue and that makes a finer line. We'll add this along our edge, our right edge. And because it's glue, we have some wiggle room still in case we don't get it lined up perfectly. Check the back side, looks good, and then we can flip it over and trim off the excess. So we're building our card from the outside, um, inside out. And then let's grab this piece and do a little curling with our bone folder. Taking our adhesive, putting some just on the half that doesn't have the cut. Do we see that? There we go. Oh, there. <laughs> the light's catching it now, I think. <laughs> Anyways, there's no adhesive here because I want this part to lift up, lift up a bit. And that's going to get added. Oh, let's put it at, at the tree area. We'll do that. There, now we can see more of the path. I like that. And this will go on the front of the card. So I'm going to close up this entire card. I'm going to line this one up, this side up, with this edge. Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to flip it this way. So I'm lining that up. And now, oh, I forgot to put my adhesive on. I'm going to put my adhesive on. Now I'm lining this up with this edge over here. Holding it nice and steady, making sure the top and the bottom card of the card look good too, and I'm laying it down. Then I flip it over, and if there's anything extending here, you can trim it off if you wish. It is four and a quarter inches wide, so it should still fit in your envelope, but there we go. And now let's open it this way and add this piece. And for this piece, You just want to have it flat as you add it. And now we've got that piece there. So there is our almost finished card. We need some embellishing. Let's grab those um, birds and dragonflies. I love the three different styles on here. We have our dragonfly image. I think I'm going to use a take your pick tool for these. We can fit that in a space on our card. Here's the grabbing little end of the take your pick tool. We've got a, a bird that is flying downward. We can put that against the black up here and a bird that is flying upward. And we can put it there. Oops. And there is our thinking of you best wishes card done with the same um, same patterning that I did as I did here. And then I've got another version to show you. I'm going to bring in those, bur uh, those butterflies, the brush brass butterflies. And we'll finish that one up. So that one needs a butterfly here and here. And then on the outside of that card, pretty paper, right? We're going to put another one on the outside, right about there. So there's our thank you so much card using just another design of that designer paper. Now, I could even see it being used with that autumn paper that everyone loves. Here's another pack of designer paper that's online um, only offered product. This one is gorgeous. It is our one horse open sleigh paper. Um, yeah, if you want to make the most of those beautiful scenery papers, this is yet another card fold that you can do to show off all of that beauty. So let's lay these out here and we might have to bring our punch in to hold them down so you can see them all at once. There we go and we'll zoom out a bit. <laughs> so yes, that is the one downfall of having all that extra on the inside is they want to kind of pop open, but you can just keep on folding and folding and folding. Maybe don't use the, um, the decoration, oops, oops, here and here. That will help hold it down. That's kind of creating more bulk, but I don't mind it. 
<laughs> it is and the glimmer thank you Lisa for pointing that out the glimmer paper is really nice um, in that you can take and rub on it and our our glitter part of the glimmer paper does not come off it's um, not a flaking kind of glitter slash glimmer paper so really easy to use all right so we have um, that announcement that November 7th the online store is going to be refreshed with these new products and several others so you'll want to you know check back on that date and see what else is in store for you to choose from for your paper crafting cards and projects um, and oh if if you want to take a peek at a couple more items I'm going to bring you over to my website so let's take a peek there really quick so here's my website stampyourartout.com and if we click on blog it takes you to my last latest post you can scroll to the bottom and when you get to the bottom that was some fun paper pumpkin kit ideas I did there sorry we'll just use this little scroll button here because it's a long post oops okay when you get to the bottom you get to this little spiel here about online exclusives you can click there oops click here sorry click here for more detail it will take you oh I, actually it's going to take you to another post let's click here for the flyer download the flyer when the flyer comes up you can see there's some cute little animal stamps there's this um, stamp uh, this stamp set that has um, this wheelbarrow and um, kind of like a little window frame some landscape pieces gardening stuff it's called garden meadow and it actually coincides with the designer paper and the brass birds and dragonflies and then um, there's also some ribbon here's that cutesy little set with the animals super cute super adorable these were things that demonstrators could pre-order but it was also uh, um, giving everybody else a chance to 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 peek at the um, products that would be available to them later on so again you'll want to visit back on um, on November 7th okay I'm gonna just click here for now the next product that is available that I wanted to talk about and it's available starting today is a new kit Stampin' Up! likes to release a new kit in the kits collection on around the first of the month it's not always on the first of the month but today is the first of November and here we have a new kit in the kits collection it's called best destination you can see that's the um, those are the cards that you get to design with this kit the envelopes coordinate you get to make nine cards with it and here are the supplies you get a stamp set you get an ink pad some adhesives here's more adhesive and here's a little bit of twine here's a close-up of the stamp set some great sentiments so if you're interested that is available today and now it's time for prizes so I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and we'll bring in prizes from last week the prizes from last week and I'm gonna make sure I'm saying this right was an assortment of hello irresistible designer paper so for those of you who are watching during the live there's two winners that are drawn from YouTube during the live and then a week later when my next live happens we draw a, a winner from the after live comments on YouTube and a winner from Facebook last week we had technical issues and we did not go live on Facebook so because of that we um, are not doing prizes for Facebook there uh, what I did is I had to download the video and it took hours later and then I uploaded it onto Facebook so people on Facebook could still see it but there was no live interaction so today's winner is just an after live commenter from YouTube I'm going to pull up her name make sure I'm on the right screen here here we go and I'm gonna put my little email address there so we can have her reach out to me Deborah Clark yay you have won a pack of hello irresistible paper now I have two packs here and that is because 
One of my winners last week, I believe, did not claim um, the pack. So let me look here. Oh, you know what happened? It, yeah, so I have an extra pack. Yay. Okay, well, anyways, <laughs> what happened is the um, one of the winners from last week wanted one of the tutorial choices instead. So you can always opt for that. If you're the winner, um, reach out to me at, at stampyourartout at comcast.net and um, claim your prize. You can either choose that product prize or if you live outside the US or you just want the tutorial instead, you can choose one of my tutorials. All right, now I'm gonna bring in the prize choices for this video. And there are four different prize choices, two for the two live winners today, one from Facebook and one from YouTube next week. All right. Thank you for sharing the video, you guys. Oh, I appreciate that so much. Let's check out what we have on the desktop here. We have a stamp set called Graceful Deers. We have, ooh, online exclusive paper. This is the One Horse Open Sleigh Pack. Ooh, here's some more online exclusive paper. Hello Irresistible, a full pack that's not been opened, so every sheet is in there. And then we have a fresh pack. This is a hot commodity, you guys, because this is not available until <laughs> November 27th now. But the um, adhesive back, dragonflies and birds are the fourth choice. So if you are the, the winner and you reach out to me first, you get to claim whichever, whatever you want first. I'm looking through the comments and I don't see the winner chosen quite yet. So I'm gonna click over somewhere else on my computer and see if I can find what, who Trisha has picked. There we go. Um, we have Pelly, Peggy Kulik and Patricia. And Patricia just is the word Patricia. So if, you're, if that's the way you're um, identified on YouTube, um, just Patricia, then reach out to me. And Peggy Kulik, congratulations to you both. Again, reach out to me at my email address, which is stampyourartout at comcast.net. To claim your prize. I hope that you all had fun today. Um, happy November again. Happy winter. We're coming into the winter season in North America so and on the Northern Hemisphere I should say. So enjoy those cooler days and to those in the Southern Hemisphere enjoy those warmer days. You guys are getting into summer right now. How fun. Um, I think I'll move very far south. <laughs> I'm missing summer already. I'm a summer girl, but it's okay. The snow is quite pretty. It's seriously super white outside. Take care, everyone. Next week, I will be live on Wednesday, November 8th at 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, this PDF that I shared in the beginning that has the measurements and supplies, this video and photos of all the cards will be live on my blog post at 3 p.m. Central Time today. Give me time to take some photographs, edit, and upload the second two cards, um, or the second and third cards. And I feel like I was gonna say something else and it just left my brain. So, um, so we'll just sign off. <laughs> Take care everyone. Uh, next week again, 11 a.m. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.